It's time for today's episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast, recorded in front of a slightly tipsy studio audience at world-famous Champions Fried Chicken. We will have the latest on Georgia Bulldogs football, basketball, and recruiting. Watch live and send us your questions on the 11 Alive Sports page on Facebook. Be advised this podcast is off the record and not safe for work. Also, be sure to subscribe to the UGA Sports Live Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the UJ Sports Live podcast from here on Champies at Baxter Street. My name is Rodney Nabulsi. I'm joined by Jake Roos and, of course, former head coach George of Georgia, Jim Donnan, Hall of Fame coach. Uh, the main reason everyone's tuning in, and uh, we, we do not take any offense to that. It does not does not hurt our feelings at all. So Not in the least. We have uh, Jim Donnan with us, so get your questions in. Uh, you're on the 365 Game Day page. Go ahead and uh, give them a like. They are good friends of ours, and for them to uh, – allow us to come on their Facebook page and uh, have the show there. It, it means a lot. So the least you can do is just give them a little like, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, quick housekeeping notes before we get into the scrimmage and all the other Georgia stuff we want to talk about. The $75 off deal is still in place for your uh, access. If you're a new member or a monthly member who wants to go premium to uh, annual, you can get a – it's 25% off, so you get $25 off the cost of a year. And it's a $75 gift card to the Adidas.com store. So uh, You should it, probably tell the folks that's at UGASports.com. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's, a, it's a UGASports.com. You can get a uh, membership there. Uh, $75 gift card. So if it's $99 a year and you get 25% off, which makes it 75 bucks, then you get a $75 gift card. That, Free. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> the effective cost to you is zero. And you can get all kind of cool red... Uh, uh, shirts, hats, shoes, all sorts of great stuff from Adidas.com. So just want to let people know that deal is still running. We are, uh, we've are we sold a lot of those, but they do have a limited number of those certificates, so get yours now. Don't wait till oh, I'll just wait till the end. Get it now. Uh, I want to jump right into the scrimmage that uh, went down this past Saturday. Coach, uh, I know you weren't out there, but you know people in the program. I'm sure you read some of the uh, reports about it. You heard Kirby Smart talk uh, talk about after it. What, were, what do you think was his main goal in scrimmage number two? You know, first of all is to keep evaluating the younger players the, to see how they react to the different uh, situations that are presented. People don't realize that uh, when you talk about a scrimmage, there's a lot of things involved. Uh, you just don't go out there and go put the ball in a certain area and go against each other for so many plays. You do that to a certain extent, but you also want to make sure because of what happens in an actual game that you cover the game situation. So they spend time in the red area, you know, where it's just designated. It's going to be all red area plays, 15 in. On the goal line, five-yard line in. Uh, so it's like and, situational. And, right, and then at the uh, they'll work on, you know, like – uh, save the game on a Hail Mary or throw the ball on a Hail Mary. They practice that. They'll practice coming out, take the ball on the one-yard line and uh, try to get them to jump off sides and get a first down and then punt out. And then all the kicking situations that, you know, kicking after a safety, returning a, a, after a safety, uh, onside kick prevent, all these different things that you got to cover that are situational that we'll have in two weeks. And then this Saturday – coming up it'll be more of our team versus Vanderbilt I think probably Wednesday of this week we'll probably start Wednesday or Thursday on the Vandy game plan but uh, to answer your question very succinctly it was just more of evaluating your personnel number one two how they'll handle the different situations that have been presented and three how much improvement have we made as a unit from last week to this week. And I think based on what Kirby had to say afterwards, he was impressed with the the way our guys went about it. Certainly the heat as a factor uh, because in, in the regular practices, we have the tendency to go inside some to install stuff and, and get things accomplished there and then go back out. But uh, I think overall our team – particularly injury-wise, is in a good situation right now. A couple guys are dinged up, but nothing that we've lost anybody for the season like some of these prominent programs. Alabama's lost two guys for the year, running back and a linebacker. So uh, I would say you never feel completely giddy about your team at this point because <laughs> there's so many things that can happen. But this is kind of over the hump week. you got to get to Thursday of this week 
and then you can see the other team and, and then you'll establish your scout teams and you'll start working more against Vandy stuff and not so much against each other. Now, at the very last bit of last week's show, we're talking about Florida. And you mentioned that Kirby keeps an eye on Florida, talks about them a little bit in each practice. I've had countless questions about that. Can you, can you elaborate on that? Well, you know, every team has a, has a team on its schedule, and certainly every one that we play is a huge one. But uh, there's no question about that, that that's a game you got to win to be successful here. That's the like, SEC East on the line right there. And, uh, and he, he spends about – you know, we got a lot of different analysts and all that, but I'm just saying with all the different things that are going on during the course of a day – uh, I feel like Kirby spends a little time watching tape on Florida just to keep it in mind. Not that he spends, you know, no. take it away from Vanderbilt or anybody else, but uh, that's, that's, well, that's what he did with He did that with uh, Georgia Tech for right. like, after that for right. first year. He's and like, look, we've we, we got to work on this uh, yeah, triple option. Well, that's – and someone actually asked that question over on uh, the vault or the vent over at UGASports.com. You know, the the time that they devoted to the triple option last year, is that time now being spent on focusing on another team? Is it being – is that where well, it's Well, it, the reason we did that is so different. And, and the thing that Absolutely. really was so good about it was all the uh, the way our scout team developed. You know, we – our scout team came, you know, like I think – and this is nothing against Paul Johnson, but – I think a couple of our guys said, hey, our scout team ran this better than Tech did. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that was a nail in the coffin, but I just obviously couldn't do that. But I think it's just – Hey, Prather Hudson. <laughs> what, what you do, what you do uh, realistically during practice, and every team we used to do at Oklahoma, we'd spend 15 minutes on Nebraska, 15 minutes on Texas, uh, you know, throughout fall camp until actually you started to get ready for the next – so – all you want to do is just present it to your team where they have a good idea of so when it the carryover value when you start playing against them and the same thing's going to be true. I think we have actually two open dates this year, don't we? That's and true. During those open dates, you have a tendency to maybe stress some of those teams a little more than you would normally, uh, particularly having two. But you know we're in such a systematic deal here, and uh, I'm very impressed. I've had a chance to go around and watch a lot of teams practice around the country since I've gotten out of coaching and a lot of organization involved. But the one thing that I continue to say to you, Roddy, off the air I'll say on is our team faces daily a rigorous task of going against good players, and that's the way Kirby likes it. They compete every day. I tried to do that here with uh, our team after we developed a little depth where – you know, you hold on to your breath a little bit, hoping nobody gets hurt. But that, that full speed stuff is worth a lot and valuable to coaching. And the other thing is just the organization we have with a two spot where we not just do one group at a time and everybody watches. You got two groups, which is basically 44 players going at the same time. And they're, they're, you watch the tape more than the coaches watch them. You know, after it's over, you can watch the tape. But. Boy, they really uh, get a lot of reps, a lot more reps than they do in a game. So, uh, and you add seven on seven, one on one, uh, pass rush, one on one blocking, one on one blocking with the receivers, one on one catching the ball. Yeah. And uh, every day, you know, George Pickens is going against Stevenson and Campbell and Daniels and Stokes. I mean, he's going to see those kind of players when he gets ready for the games. Yeah, I go back to we saw a tweet from Mikel Sherman to Sam Pittman. This was right after Georgia got his fifth offensive lineman and uh, Cedric Van Pran, and he said, you know. I guess we should talk about that today. Yeah, we should. (laughs) He said, hey, this is going to make me better. So he's looking at that crazy offensive line Georgia has got coming in in his class, and he's like, well, you know, that's what I get to go up against every day. So the iron sharpens iron. And you're right. I mean, if um, George Pickens is going up against Eric Stokes every day, that's going to make Eric Stokes better and George Pickens. And – I, I can attest to what you were saying about they're not just saying, okay, hey, it's the scrimmage. 
kick off, let's return it. You know, it's not completely a simulated game because the first thing as we were walking out of the media period is Kirby Smart gets on the bullhorn and he's like, all right, seven on seven. Let's go seven on seven. On the hop, he gets everybody lined up to do seven on seven. Ones versus twos, three versus fours mm-hmm. in two different uh, sides of the field. They're both going the same, uh, you know, different directions. So, uh, so what they'll have in, in, in interjecting to that, what they'll have is what we call a script. Mm-hmm. And you plan it out like – so starting out, the seven on seven is just to get the juices flowing, right. and then they do what they call competition, where they'll have some backs running the ball against linebackers and just form tackling and make them, and then they'll have some, you know, the old Oklahoma type drill where you're getting off a block just to get everybody ready, so you warmed up for the scrimmage, and then up on the which I really like with our scoreboard up on that board, they'll have what's coming up next. It'll be like. One kickoff versus two kickoff return. Get ready, you know, so you don't have to waste any time. And then they'll do that, and then one offense will go against two defense maybe for ten plays. Then the next thing coming out will be one punt versus two punt return right. or two punt versus one. And then you will come out there. and So it's just a, a, a systematic deal over two and a half hours where they get about 150 plays and then all those kicking situations, which I really like. Uh, we actually had um, a couple of our members at UGASports.com were actually at the scrimmage. They sent us some notes. We put them up in a war room for you to read. So, again, if you're not a member of UGA Sports, you should be. You should go over there, and you could find out what happened when the media had to leave. We have some behind-the-scenes stuff that uh, you definitely should check out. But um, uh, go to UGASports.com. I do want to bring up um, one uh, thing that everyone was telling me after that was over. Uh Apparently, Jake Fromm had a much better day, as did the wide receivers. Now, Kirby Smart came out and said – he was asked about the explosive plays. He said the wide receivers had a good day. Uh, I, the One of the takeaways from the first scrimmage was that Jake Fromm struggled a little bit. I don't – again, we're not there. I'm, I can't attest how much that is. But when I'm going through uh, some of the things that well, I was told, they said that, uh, you know, like Tyler Simmons had two big plays, you know. All these other wide receivers had big plays in the thing. That makes – your quarterback look good and I think it's just a area of concern for Georgia fans knowing how little experience is coming back in the wide receiver group to hear that hey in the scrimmage now maybe it's the ones versus the twos who knows Jake Fromm and his wide receiver group had a big day well I would put to rest any worry about our receivers as far as I'm concerned and people don't think a lot of people think I don't know if a ball's blown up or stuff but I'm just going (laughs) to tell you right now that there's a lot of things that worry me going into the season, but the lack of talent on the wide receivers is not there. The, ex- yeah. the lack of experience might be there. And I think the thing that was amplified because there were so many people that came to the first scrimmage that are in the McGill Society that, that you know, had a chance to make, a, a, you know, make some comments about what went on. And the fact that Jake just didn't hit every pass like you see him do, yeah. people have a tendency to say, well, it's the end of the bat. world. <laughs> so he's got a high standard to set. Yeah. But, uh, you know, two things that I wouldn't worry a whole lot about. One is our Jake Fromm at quarterback. And number two is anything productivity-wise out of the receivers. Because if you have a first-grade education or maybe a kindergarten education, <laughs> you can rationale this point. With those big old Chilardos we got up front, and those running backs we got, and I've said this before, we're going to have guys running down Sanford Stadium, down that stadium in uh, Jacksonville, that stadium in Knoxville with blinker lights on so open because of our play-action passing game. Yeah. Because you're going to have to stop, stop the run, and it's hard to get off blocks when you got big old guys coming off like our guys do. So what are you going to do? you got to get an unblocked guy there to stop, try to stop them, and you bring a different guy in the, in the box, you know. So we're going to have a, an ordinary amount of one-on-one situation. It just, to me, it's going to be can the guys catch the ball or drop it. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you talk about the running backs. I want to, another insider note that we got that I thought was really nice. Uh, James Cook, apparently you've talked about him multiple times, was looking very good on kick coverage. Now, think about that. This is a guy who's covering kicks, two tackles, and blew up somebody on a big hit. I go back to the first time Sonny Michelle made a big play. 
was on kick coverage. I think it was a South Carolina or something like that. He came flying down. Got to love the idea that you're, you know, James Cook, who could return kicks, return punts. It's also on the flip side over there covering kicks and making big plays. Got Again, we talk about him uh, occasionally on this show. Don't overlook James Cook. Don't overlook that offensive line. Don't overlook the running backs. Uh, good to see DeAndre Swift back out there, healthy, uh, ready to go. Uh, Brian Herrien apparently ran the ball really well. I heard good things about Kenny McIntosh. You know. Well, and that goes to a, a question we got over at Kenny Sports. McIntosh is a good, solid player, but, you know, he, he's going against the threes. Yeah. I mean, and he's going to get – more runs and he's going to get more opportunities and he did a good job there's no question about it throughout fall camp but i'm I'm encouraged that he gives us some depth there and harry and has taken advantage just like he did the year that swift was hurt all spring and he's running behind that line and he's a very solid runner cook to me is the is the big plus for us to get the weight he's gained the fact he can run inside a little bit better now with and pound it and he can also catch the ball out of the backfield unparalleled to, you know, probably like Robert Edwards did from from my standpoint. So I think what we got to do is just uh, get swift to the first game. That's a big deal. You know, hey, that's, you know, make the bus, make the plane. He's he's had some uh, issues, you know, with a little, uh, just like everybody with the heat. So what you do is just protect the guy like that. So, uh, but we got some issues on depth at tight end as far as people that have played and, you know, inexperience in certain areas. But uh, I wouldn't trade our roster with anybody in the country right now. I mean, college-wise, maybe a few pro teams, but college I wouldn't. <laughs> you um, <laughs> you mentioned, uh, and that was actually the question I was going to ask uh, one of our guys over at UGA Sports, Dirty Dog Dancing, asked, do you Dirty think James, Dog Dancing. Do you think uh, James Cook is ready to contribute a little bit more in the inside run game this year? Sure, and the thing that helps him is he's such a threat outside that people are trying to keep that outside leverage, and that sets up the cutbacks. You know, we talked about in the spring, we used a little bit of uh, Kirby wanting to see some counter action with our team so our defense could work against it because we see it all the time in, in our league and it's really worked out pretty good for our offense it gives them something extra to work on uh, defensively but it gives us a little bit different uh, scheme offensively and cook is a phenomenal cutback runner you know against the grain guy cut back and uh, he he, he's going to make a lot of big plays for us. I really believe that. A lot of it's been made about the wide receivers. We've talked about the, the running backs. And uh, you mentioned a little bit about the, the tight ends as well. A lot of people asking about that. Brian D. Young over here uh, on Dogs 365 on uh Facebook wants to know: uh, Do you think the Charlie Warner hype is real? Do you think that this uh, the the uh, the all SEC hype yeah. around him? Well, there's a little bit of of. G and a little bit of jaw in that. Just from the standpoint, we don't have anybody else that to talk about that has that kind of potential, and so there's a tendency to maybe, you know, elate him a little bit. But I really like the kid's performance when he's had a chance in games. You know, he can catch the ball, he can block, he's smart, he can play a lot of different positions, line up at Y, he can line up in the backfield and motion out. And he can yeah, well, he played can, safety in high school. And he can split out <laughs> to the wide side of the field or into the slot or into the boundary. So he, he's a big time player that's going to make a lot of plays. Uh, Wolf is a good addition because he's played in the SEC. You know what it's like. Uh, we'll have to see what Fitzpat. You know Fitzpatrick's big, strong. He's improved a lot. Uh, Goaty's had a little trouble with his hand, but you know we just don't have near the experience there that we've had at that position and so consequently the first game we might not run as much two tight ends and then the next three games build it up a little bit you know with uh, playing against some of these other teams so uh and uh, maybe the next two then we got notre dame but i, I think uh wide receiver wise though you got such unbelievable competition among good athletes that if you are on the field there at Georgia, you're going to be a good player because you're going against a good player every day in practice. I mean, Robertson's got to beat out Blaylock. I mean, Pickens has got to beat out, uh, you know, Landers. And, you know, this goes like that. That's good competition. Um, another question here that I, I really thought was interesting from our guy, Elko Dog. Uh, he's been around since 2015. First off, he wants to know, do you know where Elko, Georgia is located, Coach? 
Yeah, it's south of Perry, isn't it? It, it absolutely is. I looked it up. <laughs> you know that. I would How have. How uh, do you know that? I would never have uh, been able to pinpoint. Hey, that when you recruit all. George, you better know where <laughs> Elko is and Perry. Hey, we I know to, Perry, but that's about it. Down to Perry pretty quick, man. Uh, all right, but he says. Uh, now he says, "Can you?" Uh, hey, I went down to a place close to Perry one time, made a speech, and I, 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 I absolutely accidentally said we're going to kick their ass and, and i said i'm sorry ma'am i shouldn't she said ma'am she said coach she said don't you worry about it. we don't mind saying the a word down here in south georgia <laughs> that's south georgia dog uh, El- elko dog it. outside of uh wanting to d- test your geography knowledge uh which was very Elko's, impressive wait don't make him tough on me i knew that one he says uh he says uh coach is there anybody that you think on this squad you look at um obviously the uh all sec uh teams came out he said is there anybody that maybe is not getting enough love that they could potentially find themselves on that squad uh, at the end uh for those uh wondering uh, a couple guys who show up there andrew thomas on first team uh you got deandre swift on the first team uh jr reed first team rodrigo blankenship in the first team uh jake from second team um, let's see who else we got. Isaiah Wilson's on their side. Isaiah Wilson's second team as well. Uh, Charlie Warner, third team. Ben Cleveland, third team. Um, Tyler Clark, third team. And I think that's it. Uh, anybody that's maybe not getting enough uh, love in that sense uh, and could potentially find themselves there when it's time for uh, the season to wrap up? Well, I'm a big Cade Mays fan. He made freshman All-American last year, played a lot of different positions, came in the clutch when we needed him to su- to substitute when injuries happened. I think uh, he's got a really good chance of being the starter at right guard, and if he's not, he's going to be a guy that we use to spell all the different other positions. I think he's right there. I think he'll, as early – has already demonstrated he can play big in the big games. I think he's a, a very competent center that could do that. Defensively, uh, I think all these corners are going to step up and show you some ability, and they're going to be part of a really big-time defense, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Stokes and, was the guy that, that yeah, kind of jumped and, out. And, you as know, well. Stokes, Campbell are both good on one side, and then you got Stevenson. Over there, and uh, Daniels, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll see. Daniels has had a good fall camp, too, but he's got a little more experience. But you know what I, look, I look, though, I, I think uh, Elise, I think uh, I, I think he has really stepped up since the bowl game, and he's going to have a chance to maybe make a lot of big plays for us on defense, too. Because Ojolari is a good choice. Uh, knowing how the media and people vote, I think you need a situation where just – Give Eric Stokes maybe a couple interceptions. Give one of those guys two, maybe three interceptions, and they'll go, oh, and it won't ma- I mean, even if you're in the wrong place at the right time and play terrible, if you just get a couple things that you can hang your hat on, you know, you don't even need that player of the week. You just get the interception thing, and then all of a sudden the – Journalists and people who vote on that are like, oh, well, he had he led the league in interceptions. It doesn't well, matter at, if he get run on all the time. Look at the game last year, the first first road game. Baker intercepts that ball. Yep. It doesn't take it in the end zone, drops it. But every, you know, everybody knew right away he's a go-to guy. But yep. I think one projection I would make on this show, and I'll make one every week. But I feel like our defense is going to create an inordinate amount of turnovers because so many teams are going to be playing from behind against us. So they have and to go the air when you do. That you take risk, and you know our defense is going to be pressure oriented a lot. But at the same time, you know it's hard to throw the ball in the different holes. Sometimes when you when you're dropping eight, we got a good drop eight package too. So uh, it's just you know we've said this since the spring. Our defense is so much better athletically on the back end than it's ever been here than I can ever remember from one through. Like one of the biggest decisions is going to be how many of these DBs you're going to take on the trip. Special teams help, but you're going to take two two deep, and then you're going to have some other guys like Nolan Smith, you, you know, uh, Reese. Uh, these guys are going to have to be on special teams and all. You, know, I could see 11, 12 DBs making a trip. Wow. Uh, speaking of good planning and figuring out what you're going to do in the future, when you get a chance, I want everyone to go by yourpie.com and check out their uh, catering menu. Uh, they can cater small, big parties, you know, up to a hundred, and it's all 100% uh, uh, customizable. So let's say you're having a big corporate event, small corporate event, you want to take care of the staff for lunch, you can have either delivery or pickup. They'll do either one. Everybody can get what they want. 
So it's not a situation where they come up with some party platter and people are like, oh, well, I'm on Atkins or I'm on South Beach Diet or uh, I'm uh, got, paleo. I, I, yeah, paleo or I, I can't have gluten or I, I, don't, I don't like air. Whatever it is that you don't like, you know, you can get it customized when it comes to the Your Pie Catering. Uh, give them a shout. Give them uh, when you need to take. Hey, we're getting close to the, the games are coming up. Now, of course, if you're in Athens, there's a number of Your Pie locations here, but I think maybe your best bet if you're going to have a big tailgate, is a swing by Champions where we are right now. Get the box, man. Get the box full of their fried chicken, chicken strips, whatever you want. Get all their sides. You pick it up. You go to the tailgate. It's easy, breezy. It's the best damn chicken you'll ever have. So when you get a chance, swing by. If you're in town, you know, for your tailgate, get all your the Champions you need. Then afterwards, after the game's over, you know, you swing by your pie. And again, you, you, I know it sounds weird. It's 900 degrees outside, but... We're mostly through uh, August. It's going to be September, October. You're going to start having uh, people coming over to the house, you know, the holiday parties, the such. You know, instead of uh, getting grandma's short, uh, what is that, uh, fruit cake, cake out there, <laughs> have, have, some, have some your pie. Get something good, you know. Have something people would be happy about. So uh, give them a chance when you get a shot and, uh, of course, swing by here. I definitely want to talk some recruiting today, but I want to hit some of these questions because we got a lot today to get to. Uh, Wolf over on the board uh, coming with it. He Wolf. says, yeah, he says, uh, and this was a very interesting question. He says, um, I, I asked this in another thread, but curious if Coach has any insight. He says, which Q- QB do you expect will be running the, st- the uh, scout team? I know Stetson did an excellent job a couple years ago, but it looks like he'll be getting number two reps in practice. Do you think Mathis will be able to go, or will they go further down the depth chart? For I think the situation with Mathis will be throwing some passes over there, but they got to be careful about him getting, you know, somebody banging into him. So he'll he'll help some. We brought the Sutherland kid in from uh, transfer from uh, graduate transfer from uh, Samford, Samford yeah. who uh, has some ties here with his dad and uh, his grandfather with the program, and just a Georgia connection there. They can, that's a really good, solid quarterback that can run the plays we need. And, uh, you know, we got Setter, too. And, it, and that is named the other guy yep. they can. Mm-hmm. So we'll have, uh, we'll have some good guys there. And then Priestley could come down there. You know, they got to get him ready as a third quarterback for the trip, you know. But he could come down there in certain situations. So we got some arms out there where uh, these guys can throw the ball and test our defense. And, and we're going to go against, uh, you know, a really good uh, Vanderbilt offensive tack they got two all three of their players are ranked in the top 50 of the sec and you know the quarterback tight end and running back i mean not the quarterback the wide receiver tight end and running back are all right there and they got a quarterback coming in from ball state that uh, has started there you know as a grad transfer to you know coming in so i think they got some issues with their offensive line but uh We'll be able to focus in on those guys with good preparation. A lot of people asking about uh, linebackers here, and uh, our, our guy Beach Dog Twenty over on the board. Beach uh, Dog, and uh, we had I think Phil Rogers was the one who asked this over on uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, want to know about uh, starting linebackers? Beach Dog wants to know: Do you think Tay Crowder can hold off the likes of Channing Tindall, Nicobe Dean, and Quay Walker for a starting inside linebacker spot down the line over the course of the season? Well, early on, you're going to go with uh, you always give the senior the and the more experienced guy the the shot but certainly these guys are capable all three that they mentioned you know walker dean and uh tindall and then you got monty rice who's had a good fall camp and you know hurt us last year when he was out of there because he's he's a very uh aggressive kid he's very smart and then uh you know help us get in all these different packages because we're going to run more stuff this year because as i said we got more man pressures that we can utilize so but uh, I feel good about our inside backer. As, as much as we were hurting last year for, for experience, we've got guys now that have played in games. We've seen Tyndall rush the passer against Kentucky, make a play. These guys have been in, been in games, so they're not going to be nervous. So uh, I, I like our linebacker group. I mean, I really think we're very talented, very well coached, and 
can uh, line up with anybody there. One to, uh, another question here, uh, which I had to go to because Jim Bruffy outed himself as Valrico Dog. Very brave What's of you, name? Jim. Uh, v- Jim Bruffy. Uh, he goes by Valrico Dog on the board. Shout out for outing yourself uh, with your, <laughs> your handle on the board. Uh, but he wants to yes. know, uh, he says, what's the status on Nakobe Dean? Obviously, uh, there was uh, Kirby Smart mentioned him on Saturday. We didn't see him out there for the media portion. Uh, said that he was a little bit banged up, thought he would be okay. Uh, Roddy, what have you heard on that front? Uh, we heard, and again, this is the type of stuff that you get at UGASports.com, 27 cents a day, or free if you get the $75 gift card. Uh, in our news and notes from the Saturday scrimmage, we were, you know, you pointed out after we went down there and watched uh, watched the guys warm up, no Nicobe Dean. Uh, Kirby Smart said, hey, he's got an injury. He's going to be fine. Uh, you know, we did a little digging. We were told that it was a mild high ankle sprain. Now, again, this is – we did not hear that from a hundred people. We heard that from a source who knows a friend, who knows a third party, who knows someone else. So we don't know for certain. But uh, we also didn't get any contradictory information. You know, if we put something out, we'll have someone call up and go, hey, "Dude, that's completely wrong." You know. But uh, we don't know the extent of it. But we were told that it is mild and that he will be fine and not to worry about it. Now we told you what was going on with uh, uh, DeAndre Swift when everybody was panicking. Nobody had any clue when he wasn't in practice. And we were dead on that one. We've been dead on one a lot of our uh, injury updates. So, you know, if, if Kirby comes out and says he's going to be fine, Kirby's been very – I'll give him credit for this. He's usually very – He'll answer very if you honest. ask him with, the right within, question. Within HIPAA rules, you yeah. know, he, he, he's not allowed to say certain things. But, you know, if he says, look, we don't expect him back for a while, he's not going to be back for a while. You know, like uh, uh, he – and sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's optimistic. He never came out and said, "Look, David Marshall's done for the year." Like he could have many times last year, but he never said, "Hey, we expect him back this week." You know, he never, uh, you know, came out with it. But there are other times that he has been dead on. Uh, so I, if he says, in other words, I don't think he was going to give people false hope. If there's something that big had happened, I think he would have said, "It's a it's something we have to deal with." Well, the general tendency there is when somebody's out, then the the prophet of doom hits all of us. You Ab- know. Absolutely, but, everybody, yeah. But at the same time, there's a real tendency at this time of the year to, to err on the side of, hey, let's let them rest a little bit compared yeah. to, uh, you know, what, let's let them work through it, particularly if he has some kind of ankle injury, which I don't know that hopefully you're right, but I don't know what's wrong with him. But from our standpoint, uh, coaching-wise, my, my deal is, you know, we won't – we want to get the guy well, particularly when, in fact, you got a week and a half. You know, a couple of days off might make the difference. And he's probably chomping at the bit to get back out there. But the rest part, it'll be interesting to see if he's out there today when you guys are out there. I, I do wonder if he'll actually uh, be out there. And, again, a lot of it is if you're a freshman, you know, you need to be out here just watching. Well, they'll and be if, out if, there. If you can stand, you know, be out there. But a, how much will he actually be going through some of the drills and such, you know? Well, and that's one of those, too, that I, I, I think with the high ankle sprain, uh, you know, if even even with a mild one, uh, like you said, Coach, it, you rest that. That's that's one of those that can unfortunately turn into a nagging injury. I think Charlie Warner was affected by one of those a couple of years yeah. back. So The difference um, in, in a scrimmage at the stadium and something up at the, the butt smear is the fact that, all the rehab stuff is right there. So there's a tendency sometimes where a guy might come out for a little bit at the butt smear and then go in and do the rehab yeah. where if he's down in the stadium, rather than take him down there, he just stay up at the butt smear the whole time and get the rehab. That's a good point. It's, it's smart thinking. Uh, speaking of being smart, uh, everybody, when you get a chance, swing out by Athens Ford. Uh, go just out on the west side of town. You can go to AthensFord.com, get a $500 off coupon for any vehicle. So if you just go to AthensFord.com, you can give them your name and uh, email. They will give you a $500 off coupon. Also, if you are a student or a member of the military or a first responder, they have deals for you. So I don't know if you can double dip, but I bet you could, knowing the folks out there. Uh, If uh, you don't like saving $500, you don't have to do that, and you just say you just drive out there. Uh, I'm going to tell you about one of the deals that I like the most. They have the 2019 Ford Explorer. I drive the 2016. I love it. Coach Donna's ridden in it. You've ridden in it. Everyone likes that car. Uh, right now, it is $9,000 off a 2019 model, or you get 0% financing for 72 months. So the Athens Ford uh, dealership, home of people who are huge Georgia fans. Last Friday, they had uh, a dog days out there. They had Harry Dog, cheerleaders, uh, food, little, little ice cream dude. 
uh, tons of giveaways. They are a big member of this community. I know every uh, winter they do tons and tons of gifts for the uh, kids. So uh, they're good. They're a good sport, and I can tell you, there's probably nobody more excited about the fact that football is close to being back. We're less than two weeks away from Georgia football. Than Jake the folks Fromm days. Sport. Somebody yeah, pointed Fromm out. Days. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, eleven days away from Georgia football. Uh, for those of you listening to this on Thursday and Friday, it's even closer. Uh, week zero, there are some games. I'm, I'm excited to watch Florida Miami, man. That's yeah. that's that's so, going to so be a there, fun one. So there are games on the way. And again, if you. Uh, if you're not watching the Georgia game, swing by Athens Ford. They are big sponsors of the show and the website. All right. Well, I know we hey, get seriously, though. How about that that little deal I sent you yesterday with that gator crawling <laughs> over the – a guy sent – seriously, fans. A guy sent me a picture of this alligator going over the top of a, of a fence. Actually Climbing crawling. Climbing a chain link fence. And the little thing underneath it said, this is the 10th gator hitting the transfer portal. <laughs> Just brutal. Have you ever heard of any team having as different a roster right now as they did at the end of spring as this team? I told Roddy the other day, I believe the the, the number I've seen on it, uh, with all the departures out of this recruiting class, I believe it puts Florida somewhere in the 17 to 20 range. Probably one of their – and it it is historically one of their lowest classes in rivals history uh, with all the departures. And that's even without McElwain. (laughs) <laughs> all right i do want to hey well though they get a big boost from getting Brenton cox that's true that's true well, he doesn't count on that i know i want to uh i want to touch on some recruiting though because uh, we can fill the we can fill the show with questions but we did get a huge yeah. commitment on uh, friday night cedric van pran uh announces saturday night saturday night was that saturday yeah, yeah. okay i can't remember it all blurs together yeah, i'll give you guys a shout out because you, you guys had the scoop on that. Yeah, we uh, we, we, we did have the uh, the exclusive commitment video. Uh, he did that with uh, our, our good friends over in uh, New Orleans. Um, shout out to all those guys over there, Jimmy Smith especially. Uh, appreciate you, Jimmy. Um, Buy your productions. And um, But uh, Cedric Van Pran, huge pickup for the Bulldogs. Rounds out the class. I don't. I don't think they're going to get greedy enough to go for a sixth lineman in the uh, rivals two hundred and fifty. Well, if you're a, if you're a sixth lineman, you're like, oh hell no. <laughs> now, I will say, I've I saw him. I've had a chance to uh, obviously I've watched the film. Um, you know, I've had the chance to to catch up with the kid. I, I I've known him for uh, you know about a year and a half now. Um, Roddy, you had a chance to watch him though uh, down at uh, the Under Armour camp, I believe it was down in New Orleans and uh, Rivals camp. Yeah, he came to both. Camp, so I'm back to back. Yeah. Game. So um, uh, your thoughts on him, and then I'll talk a little bit about the five star challenge. Uh, Cedric Van Pran, and I put in a, uh, a forecast for him weeks ago when I heard that it looked like he was Georgia was going to get him, and uh, there was somebody else that went, uh, somebody came, came into Oklahoma or something, and everyone was freaking out about that, and they're like, "Oh, we missed out on this guy." I'm like, "No, no." Georgia's Rame. got Rame. Andrew yeah. Rame. Yeah. I'm like, no, Georgia's got their guy. Don't worry about it. So uh, we put in a forecast that he was going to commit to Georgia. And in the two days I saw him, I don't think I saw him lose a rep. And we saw him rep, you know, at center. We saw him rep at guard. We saw him move out of tackle. This is a guy, again, you talk about the Swiss Army Knife offensive lineman. This is a guy who can play all five spots. I'm very impressed. But he's the number one center in the nation. And if you look at, you know, the Braun, the uh, Jones, you know, uh, your other Rattledge, you know Tate Rattledge. I mean, can Matt, Rattledge can play any of them. Uh, Braun can do it. You've got two giant, three giant tackles, a couple guards. And now you have a center. In other words, you can almost line them up. And that is a you know Michigan had their Fab Five. I'd hate to steal that, but you, there needs to be a uh, nickname for this group of five because this, this, these are bad men. But yeah. Cedric Van Pran can move. You look at his base; it's great. I mean. Coach Don and his mouth will be watered, and you watch this kid come out of his snap. He moves his feet well. He does not lumber. A dancing bear. Uh, the guy can fly, and you, you're, he's very bright. And I think Georgia fans are going to love his personality. I think he wants to be a broadcaster when he's done. Really? Uh, yeah. So uh, He's you know, got a future there as well. The kid has a big future. I met him up great here at the uh, weekend when we had the slip and slide and all that. But also, uh, i got to take a little – little heat here because that wasn't just a guy that sent me that gator picture that was my daughter tammy i forgot <laughs> so she she actually mm-hmm. sent it to me and she took a lot of uh, uh, you know just like all of us that's kind of funny really did you think it's funny the gator oh going? no it was great uh coach can you talk about what you've seen i mean 
can you just talk about the, the work Sam Pittman's done on this class? I mean, it, it's if, if all holds true, uh, they will finish with four Rivals 100 linemen. That'll be the first time in Rivals history that's ever happened. Uh, all five plus years. years in the Rivals 250. Um, and obviously, like we said, a lot of versatile players, guys who can play a lot of spots. And look at all the guys he came in second on. I mean, sure. you know, down to the wire, obviously, with the guy from uh, Oklahoma, uh, you know, Miles Hinton over here is a good player. There's one other lineman around there. Who's the other one that's close to here? Uh, mm. And then you look at the guys who are going on for next year uh, with Mims. And oh, all that yeah. Stuff. So, it's just, it's just the idea that, you know, he he based it on performance and people see – his his uh, recruiting prowess to this point, he's getting a lot of help from the head coach. I mean, he does a good job, and then the, the whole offensive staff and the style really helps you get ready. You know, all these kids are looking for the next level, and uh, the thing you get with Sam is he, he tells you how it is, you know, and he's not going to sugarcoat anything. And the best recruiters he's got are his own players because they're going to tell you whether they're first team or third that he's going to treat you fairly so hey, he's, he's a very good uh, very good man to go with him the fact that he's a heck of a coach i want to jump in on that because we were talking to one of the kids and they had not as an official host because i don't think it was an official visit but one of them the kids was walking around with uh, owen condon this is a guy who you know came in got beat up a little bit and uh you know had an injury he's coming back red shirted last year yep uh, Owen is singing the praises. You know, a guy who hasn't had a chance to play, didn't get a chance to play a whole lot last year. So you got to be excited. It's like, as a representative, it wasn't Andrew Thomas saying, "Look, come here and be like me." You got guys who you know are still fighting to get up the depth chart. Still, pray, you know, no animosity there, no sour grapes. No, I didn't play as many games as I wanted to. A guy like that vouching for Sam Pittman was big. And shout out to Cortez Hankton, who has the New Orleans area from there. He's been doing big things in Louisiana. And you know, if you get – when it's Sam Pittman and Dell McGee going into Atlanta, you know, guys like that talking to Broderick Jones. You have uh, other guys on the staff going and saying, hey, Tate Radledge, come here. And, of course, Kirby doing it. We give Sam Pittman a lot of credit, but he's not doing it on his own. Uh, he does those yes, sir videos on his own, but that's about it. You know, he's got a great help. And, again, uh, every one of them has said, Coach Pittman does – to, to use your words, does not sugarcoat it. He tells it like it is, and I think that uh, a lot of those linemen hear such uh, promises. You know, we need you. You know, yeah. you're going to start right away. When you turn to a kid like Jamari Sawyer and say, look, you're going to have to earn a starting spot. Yeah. Hey, five-star. It does, You know, I've got other five-stars. You're going to have to earn it just like you would – if you join an NFL team. Yeah. Well, and credit, I credit Sam Pittman's evaluation here as well. Um, we had uh, the interview with Cedric after he picked up the offer last year. He told us at the time, and I, it's been reported that that was Georgia was his first SEC offer. He told us at the fir- at the time it was his first pers- first Power Five offer. So uh, Georgia going out on the limb, uh, taking the risk, uh, pays off huge. That's nuts because you, you know, look another, at him, you offer that kid. He's amazing. You know, another thing that that I don't really share much on. Because it's not fair, because I really don't talk to Kirby that much. And, but when I do, you know, he we talk about things. And I, I, I said something last, I don't know, four or five months ago. I said, what in the world are we doing recruiting a lineman from Louisiana? I said, we can't go. And he said, yeah, I kept t- talking to Sam about that, you know. Sure. Well, what's our shot? But he he said, Sam feels like he's got a shot. So he knew what he's talking about. And uh, that you also look at. We had the other kid that went ended up going to A&M. He was right there, too. Yeah, that's right, Akinola. That's he's a, true. He's yep. a high-ranking guy. So uh, Yeah, they definitely uh, – you, the, you got to the, the bottom line for all our fans and everything, though, whoever is recruiting for Georgia is going to have a shot. But Sam is going to be a little bit more with his experience and his background and all that. He's got an extra shot, so – but the overwhelming thing is the G is powerful. I'm telling you now, the G, I mean, you can recruit against the – I mean, Sam could be 
coaching somewhere else and George will be after the guy, you don't know. But, I mean, I'm high on Sam, that's for sure. I want to interject one last recruiting question here, and uh, I'm going to shout out our guy, uh, uh, Cleveland, Tennessee Dog, because uh, he's there out he here is. in the crowd with us uh, today. He uh, he worked this one in. So uh, hey, ask if you show up, you get your question answered. He's, he says uh, – Except for Tim Pinnell. He, he says, this is going to be, says, this is gonna be something controversial. He says, no, with the, uh, he says, with the limited scholarships left for the class. Uh, already started. George, obviously, Georgia uh, spots at a premium now. He says, does it bother coaches when a recruit will not go public with this commitment? Do, do you trust a silent commitment? I think you do, uh, just from a standpoint of you know where, where the kid's coming from. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the kid wants to make a few visits, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you don't feel good about a guy like that, you need to put the hat on him, you know. But it's hard to put the hat on Ringo and Sewell and when they got all these other scholarships. But uh, there's a lot more to do with these silent commits than it used to be because everything's so public now. You know, yeah. everything you read about – is one thing, but these kids are tweeting where they are. The, the the other recruits are hitting them over the internet and all that. So, so the answer there is, you got to just be patient, you know, and hope that at the end you got some place for them. The wor- thing that worries me right now is who can get in and and, and wants to come in at the at the uh, semester, and how many spots will we have for that? You know what I mean? Sure. Because no, we've absolutely. lost some kids because of that, haven't we? I mean, guys wanted to come in early, and when we had a kid go to Texas there a couple years ago. Yep, I mean, Neil those, Carter. Those things happen. So squad roster management's big, but uh, but I would say with the, the answer straight up, with the limited scholarships we have left, they've got to prioritize who's going to go get what. And I feel good about the guys we were after. It's just unbelievable, isn't it? Those guys are just – Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, while Roddy's over here playing on Twitter, I'll go, no, go ahead and work I, I, in another I, I, one. I, there might be some bad news here. I'm looking at it. Okay. Uh, BRT, Are you serious? BRT yeah. Fritz uh, with a question here. He says, Coach, when there is a uh, player discipline like Brendan Cox was, do you think that that tends to galvanize a team or does it split it? What factors drive it one way or the other, and how do you think the team is responding here? If you've got a bad culture, it just adds to that culture. But if you got a culture like we got – it adds to it from a standpoint that, that uh, hey, you know, the players are not adverse to what's going on. They know every situation. There's no secrets out there. And usually speaking, most of the times I've had, and I can't say this in the case of Brent Cox because it wouldn't be fair, but most of the time when I've made a de- decision that affected the team like this, team is totally behind you. You know what I mean? I had to kick a guy off right before the national championship game at Marshall, and uh, rather than just do it right off, I asked the team, what do you think? I said, let's just take a vote here because if it's overwhelming that I'm wrong, I want to I want to listen to you. It was 56 to nothing that they wanted to kick him off. Oh, to. wow. Could, couldn't dress but 56, but I would have never – I would have never uh, – I might have reevaluated if it was 56 to nothing, let him – play you know what i mean so absolutely but usually speaking kids respond to discipline they love discipline they want to be they're starving for it they want to be fair and you lose fairness when you when you don't take when you let somebody get by with something you know what i mean and kirby's not going to do that he he doesn't play favorites he doesn't uh sugarcoat things and he he's very our He's on some of the best players as much as he is some of the worst ones you know i mean he gets on them uh, not to be a downer here, but uh, this was actually came up with a message board at UGSports.com. I didn't realize that uh, uh, Coach Blake Anderson, his wife Wendy, has passed away. Uh, he is the head coach of Arkansas State. Uh, his wife was battling cancer. He uh, The other day announced he was taking a leave of absence. Um, apparently his wife has passed. Cancer is cancer's garbage. It uh, affects all of us and it's just fucking brutal. Um, Blake's I, good Good man, good coach. Uh, he used to be the uh, it used to be uh, at Southern Miss when I was calling games and uh, sent him a text this morning. I, uh, his wife Wendy's really had a valiant fight here. Yeah. Been a uh, tough situation, and you know Arkansas State has really always been good the last seven or eight years. They had a lot of turnover in coaches, but that that'll be a, a good test for us going against this team. And, and you can, you got to believe that they're going to be. 
even more motivated, you know, to back their coach from this situation. But our thoughts and prayers are out to Blake and the whole Arkansas State Wolves program. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Georgia fans, uh, you know, you re- they respond very classily. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's the reason I noticed Austin it. P, so. Yeah, uh, because – the our publisher over there is mentioning all the Georgia fans that have reached out, you know, with words of. Uh, yesterday it was just words of uh, prayers, you know, when he uh, the uh, leave of absence was mentioned, and then of course a lot of condolences from the Georgia fans. Uh, Georgia faces Arkansas State week three. Um, Georgia fans classy as usual, and part of it, I hate to say it, is because God, everybody here knows somebody has been affected by cancer. Sure. So um, uh, it's a it's a common enemy. Uh, but glad college football is here. Uh, let's grab another question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Phil Rogers wants to know, do you think the recruiting class will be higher rated than 2018? I think it's got a chance. Uh, look, I mean, I, they're going to have a chance to push for one. I mean, they're, with the guys left on the board, you can still realistically get there. Um, now, somebody asked yesterday on the board, do you think Georgia signs eight five stars? I'm not ready to start penciling all those guys <laughs> in right now. Uh, you got a long way to go with some of these cats. Uh, you know, I feel good about their chances with several of them, but uh, it's a lot of twists and turns for some of these guys. I, I'm not going to start penciling them in just yet. Chuck Ward here with a good but coach. But don't get mad because they don't commit. Sure. you gotta, you got to look at these guys and put it back in perspective here. Three or four years, five years ago, all these guys wouldn't be signing until December or January of next year. Now, with this early signing date, we can evolve and say, hey, well, they, these guys are, you know, we got a chance to get them early, but, but hey, let's be glad that you're this close. I mean, realistically, we're six months ahead of schedule compared to the old days, so don't be impatient. I mean, uh, offensive line's done. Right. So, yeah, you got to uh, be in it to win it. So last, uh, last one I want to get to here. In it to win here, it. But, uh, I like it. Uh, Chuck Ward uh, with a good one here. He says, Coach, uh, who do you think, uh, if, if it's up to you, who's the first guy off the bus with all the guys that they've stacked up, all these war daddies, he says. You mean from, from the freshman standpoint or from the other guys? No, no, no. Yeah, anybody. Who, who are you putting off the bus first if you're Kirby Smart? As far as just to let the other team think yeah. it'll be about 70 more like yeah. <laughs> I would I would say Isaiah Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I got to get cut. <laughs> I've never seen an offensive lineman that looked like that at that size. Yeah, he's freaky big. I mean, when, you're, when your cheeks are concave, you know, from like your uh, cheekbone to your chin is uh, a strong angle on an offensive lineman, that, that's unreal. And the thing about that, that's another good indicator. You know, he had a tremendous high school background as far as – the, the the talk about him and everything, but he, he went against all these smaller kids, and he has really redeveloped his bro- body under Scott Sinclair and his techniques. Sam has done a great job, but this guy's a technician now. He he knows how to take the right steps. He, he uses his leverage, and he's a, gr- a really good example of taking advantage of, of, of not playing early and really learning how to play that position. Well, we're all going to be working for him because he's one of the brightest guys on the team. Like him a lot. Um, I think his future after football is going to be quite amazing, too. Speaking of things that look good, uh, we have a new sponsor for the podcast. It's the Georgia Game Day Center. Uh, it is located downtown. There's are 133 units. There are condos. They, it is a Georgia-themed building. You walk in, there's uh, four giant TVs on the wall, red and black couches everywhere. Uh, ha- they have a shuttle to the games. Uh, you know, a lot of people own those condos and they come back for a lot of the games, but there are games that you can rent. And also, you don't have to be there just for the games. Now, I know they have uh, spots available for the Murray State game and the Arkansas State game. And if you buy, uh, if you reserve rooms for both those weekends, you will get a two night voucher. So they've got a deal in case you want to come in and watch those two games. Um, and of course, you know, you can find the other ones. Uh, if you have a graduation, if you're coming up for AthFest, uh, wedding. If you're just uh, coming downtown to have a good time. Twilight man. Criterium. They located in downtown Athens. Dedicated parking deck. You're not trying to find a spot on the side on the road there. You know, in a leaving every hour to put a quarter in the meter. They got a dedicated parking deck. So if you want to come in and have a great uh, event for Twilight or something like that, reach out to Georgia Game Day Centers. And I mean, uh, the guy that's, that's in charge of uh, booking those rooms, he has been on the dog event since I think it's founding. He might have been like guy number two. He's been around a long time. So big supporter of UGA Sports and a huge Georgia fan. I mean, think about it. He works at a place, at a building that's dedicated to Georgia fans. Yeah. You walk into Holiday Inn, they might have some red and black balloons up. But this is a place who they order couches in that uh, color scheme. You know, this is a fully dedicated Georgia place. So when you get a chance, uh, swing out and talk to those folks. 
All right. Well, tell me about the Murray State Racers. I can't tell you anything about the Murray State I don't know Racers. much about no, them. I didn't, right. I'm glad you said – I'm glad you said – and that's the thing. It's like, you know, if you're coming in Good for a game like that. Good basketball last year. Yes, absolutely. John Morant, second in the uh, NBA draft. Yeah, I love, you know, a game – a lot of people don't say, well, I only, I only want to come watch Georgia Auburn. I'm like, you don't want to come to Athens on a Friday night – Hang out with your friends. Go walk 30 feet to, uh, you know, uh, go back to the grill or go down to Last Resort, you know, or any of the other trans- – any of the fantastic restaurants downtown, you know. Have come a, to Champies. Come to Champies. Then Saturday morning, go see a game where you know your team's going to ball out. You're going to watch Zamir White break 100 yards. You're going to watch your team do well. Then – be yes, able to Saturday enjoy night. town. Enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, Saturday night, Listen, Sunday morning. I, my dad came down for UMass last year, and um, uh, he came down to, to hang out with us. But he was like, ah, you know, I haven't been to a game in a while. I'll go catch a game. Uh, went to it, and uh, I ended up catching up with him later that night downtown. And he said, he said, honestly, I don't know that I'll ever do another big game again. He said, you know, this is so much better of an atmosphere. You get to really enjoy, soak up town. I mean, listen, you better know uh, at Notre Dame, man. I mean. Downtown is going to be absurd when that it, game is over. And it would be nice when that, when Georgia wins that game. You go downtown, you have some <laughs> drinks, and you don't have to stumble to a car, try to get an Uber, hop into one of those little tick tick things with the little things that drive around. Tuk Tuk. Yeah, one yeah. of those. You walk to your condos there at the Georgia Game Day Center, you can't beat it. It's you uh, know, one of the things that, that I would say hell, about you need to eat it, I can do. Coach Switzer used to say, when people talk about the schedule or something like that, you know, of course, we were beating everybody. Even Oklahoma was beating Texas and Nebraska at that time pretty easily. But he said, look, you come to Norman, Oklahoma, you come to see the schooner. You come to see the see the Sooners. You come to see Barry Switzer. You come to see everything about Oklahoma football tradition, everything. You come to Oklahoma to see Oklahoma. You don't come to see north of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, he's got a great point. Uh, that's anyway. what you do in Georgia. You come to see it. <laughs> hey, if you are coming to town and you want to go to the Aftoberfest, okay, Academia Brewing Company is putting on their version of an Oktoberfest. I think they got like thirty bands out there. It's over three days at the end of September. You can't beat it. Hey, you need a place to stay? Stay at Georgia Game Day Centers and eat all that fantastic food over at Academia Brewing Company. Leave with cases and cases of beer. Get your hopper DJ, you know. You can be that guy in you your neighborhood. You can, you can, you're, you'll be the guy with uh, the stash for sure. You'll be the guy that everybody. Will, hey, can we watch the game in your house? You know, because you have all the good beer. So uh, when you get a chance, we have to uh, check out the Academia Brewing Company website. Well, just go to the Facebook; it's even easier. Go to Academia Brewing Company on Facebook. Besides, if you like pictures of good food, they share pictures of great food. So, uh, of course, when you come to town, you can stay at uh, Georgia Game Day. Swing by Academia Brew Company, and then on your tailgate, you know, uh, pick up, uh, get it from here from Champies. Then on your way out of town, you know, post game, uh, late night, get your Europe pie. There you go. Uh, uh, I'm, a- I'm actually really glad you mentioned Barry Switzer because somebody on the board <laughs> had a question. Uh, does Coach Donnan own uh, one of those giant uh, um, fur coats like Barry Switzer has? Uh, he actually posted a picture of it and he says, Does Coach Donnan own a jacket of this magnitude? That's like a dead bear. You know, I don't have one like that. My wife does. Uh, <laughs> we had this guy that uh, was a big sponsor out there that had uh, a big fur place there in Oklahoma City. So we, we got good deals on those. But Barry, got you know, he got them for himself. And I remember Jamel Holloway, when he hurt his knee, was on the sideline and took Switzer's coat, and he was there with a fur coat on it. He didn't go across that. But it was um, – I would ask the fans – who is going to be the long snapper for Georgia? I was actually asked that the other day. I can God, tell that, you. That's how uh, diehard our fans are. I can tell you how smart our coaches are. All right, who's and going the to be guy's the guy's last name is S-M-A-R-T. To, on top of things, he got this long snapper to transfer from Mercer. It's Steven Nixon, stronger than Ajax, man. The guy's a good snapper, and he's coming right in here and going to be our long snapper. Wow. And that's why he listens to Wait, 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 no, wait, wait. The, the long snapper at Georgia is forever named Fricks. It's been a Fricks as long as I can remember. <laughs> or a theist. Stephen Nix. Yeah, I'm telling you now, that's pretty slick by Kirby. What, no, doubt, great, no doubt. No doubt. Did anybody know that? I have no idea. I'd you haven't read that on some of these other sto- uh, people? I don't read anybody else. We always I know. Have news they first. read your stuff and copy it. Don't <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like to me, but. <laughs> there, there you go. Jake don't know it. It didn't happen. Uh, well, but so, uh, did you know who the snapper is going to be? 
That's pretty slick by Kirby, wasn't it? No I doubt. No and Scott Fountain. Uh, I want to slip in one more question here uh, from our guy Ronnie Brown. Uh, Ronnie, come on, Ronnie. Uh, always great. He says, uh, he says, other than the offensive line, what position group do you see being the most dominant against Vanderbilt? I think our secondary is going to have a big day up there just because uh, hopefully we're going to be ahead and they, they, they don't realize how good our secondary is. But I think our kicking game is going to really be dominant because of all the athleticism in it. But, you know, the first game is hard to look like a well-oiled machine, though. you got so many guys that haven't played together. And, uh, you know, certainly the first group of offensive linemen really are outstanding. But the second group – uh, got a ways to go as far as experience and all. So uh, they're going to get to play a lot. Hopefully the game's going to be in where we get. But you never know about that. But I, I would say the secondary. I like it. I'll go the outside linebackers. Give me running back. Only that. They get to oh, run behind the offensive line. Cheater. <laughs> if the offensive line has a great day, you got to say. Oh, my God. The only thing about the outside that's just, backers. That's, that's playing with your head, my friend. The only thing about the outside <laughs> backers that's tough is only one of them's on the field at a time. I don't care. I think they get three sacks. Well, they will. Terry Forshee says defensive line. D-line's going to be good. I, hey, I, I think that would excite a lot of people to see that for they, sure. They're, they're going to flush him out. They're going to flush him into my outside linebacker that I called. And when then, and when everyone comes out and says, Roddy was right. Yeah. All right. That's, that's, yeah that happens all the time. What else we got? <laughs> but before you get to uh, any other questions, I want to mention a big sp- uh, sponsor of the show and the website, Aaron Overhead Doors. Uh, if you're a Georgia fan and you need your garage door fixed, because I, I, I keep saying Aaron Overhead Doors and it sounds like it runs together. Just think garage door company. I have a garage door. I have a garage door opener. I need it fixed. I need uh, repaired. I want a new one. I want the ones made out of these uh, wood panels that are, you know, uh, that are beautiful. They can do custom ones. Uh, they can, you know, if you want to change change your uh, garage o- into a work area. Open up the man cave for, uh, you know, for Saturday game day. So these guys can uh, take care of it. Uh, they, they're still running their 10% off deal for UGA fans. I don't know if anybody else says, look. Uh, if you're like a Georgia it. fan, we're going to give you 10% off. I like That's it. just – you sure as hell don't get that when you walk into Target, you know. You don't get that when you deal with anybody else. Hey, Lowe's, I want 10% off for being a Georgia fan. Not going to happen. So, <laughs> And uh, some other overhead door companies definitely won't do that. But when you get a chance, Aaron Overhead Doors, it's actually a big company. I know a lot of people go, well, it's just named after a guy. It's a large, large company. They have a lot of people, uh, employees who will come to your house. You can sign up for a appointment online. So they come to you, and they don't charge you anything. And they're not going to treat you like a big company. Exactly. That's for sure. So big shout-out to the folks, uh, Ryan Lucia over there. I was supposed to go over there Friday. They were having a cookout, and well, I wanted to go. you get your sauce? That's what I wanted to go. I, I wanted know. to have a cookout. But then we were dealing with the uh, Van Pran announcement. We had to make sure the video was lined up for the when he when he was ready to announce it. Uh, we had to sit on that. So we, we were doing some uh, last-minute editing of the uh, Van Pran video. If you get a chance, if you want to see a cool video, Go to uh, Georgia Football on YouTube.com. It's our channel. Check out uh, Cedric Van Pran committing. It is uh, and subscribe while you're there. Yeah, yeah, it is just a great video. He, he he asked to get his teammates into it and his classmates. And again, that's why I say he's going to be a crowd favorite. And I like the way the kids responded to him jumping around. On they, they, were, they had no idea. These, these guys are from Louisiana too. It was yeah. not like yeah. he's going to LSU or no, something. No, no. Uh, he didn't tell them what was going to happen. They had a video camera out there, and so he, you know, turns around, announces he's going to Georgia. He gets mobbed by his teammates. They're so happy for him. Uh, they were thrilled to see it. And then we had to swear them all to secrecy so that they wouldn't ruin uh, Cedric Van Prince's uh, big announcement. But get a chance to watch that video. Good job. All right. Uh, next week, what? We'll be talking game week. Game week, huh? We'll be, yeah, well, game week we'll be making fun of going Florida the, or Miami. Going one. against the doors. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's going to be an interesting scenario, that uh, Miami game, because – Yeah, who do you like in uh, that one? I mean, I'm not sure about that. i got to do a little scouting here. But I understand that uh, – Florida, I mean, Miami's a little bit better than what everybody thinks they are. And, and, hey, we like that kid. You and I looked at the tape of that kid that's at Williams from over here in uh, Gwinnett. Jared yes. Williams. Yes. He's, a, he's a good quarterback. And, you know, we were just in a situation where we couldn't, you know, you can't go after all of them. But he really uh, – You really, wish, wish you effect, had him right now. He's an effective quarterback. And, uh, you know, I think – Around the country, a lot of things going on quarterback-wise. We saw where they gave the job to Fields yesterday. 
and uh, or he earned it, however how it worked. But uh, I understand Jacob Eason's in the really dogfight for the starting position out there at Washington, too. Some, somebody asked a very interesting question about that. They said, if the other guy wins it out, what's the chance Jacob Eason transfers back as a grad transfer <laughs> if Jake Fromm leaves? That would be... That would be the story of the that century, would be, wouldn't yeah. it? That would be, <laughs> that would be the uh, that would be an interesting scenario. That would, I'm, not sure gonna, would. I'm not going to call Tony Eason and ask him that. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, no, I'm going with Miami this weekend. By the way, I, I do think uh, they've got some really going talented. The they got some very talented young guys that you're going to be learning a lot more about. Lorenzo Lingard is a guy you definitely need to know. Trajan Bandy is a junior who's going to be making an impact this year. They got a lot of transfers um, too. Jeff Thomas is a guy who, uh, when he's out there, is great. Mark Pope was a guy. I loved Loved watching in Give high school, bleeds. so um, you gotta. You, I, I, I like the uh, emerging guys that uh, the, that the Canes have. Um, I do think Florida will give them a fight, but uh, I think that this is going to be a much yeah. improved I mean, Miami yeah, team. I'm, Give me I'm Miami. Inter- I'm interested to see how Manny Diaz does as a, not being the tennis coach here now, coaching the <laughs> football team down there. He's going to decide whether to serve or, or, or receive. But uh, oh, Manny! No, hey, Manny Diaz. I'm going to tell you, I give the guy credit. Started out. You know, in the in the uh, room up there at ESPN, the mail room, and worked his way around. He got a break, got to work for Chuck Amato as a graduate assistant, and has really come up through the ranks. Worked at Middle Tennessee, then uh, Mississippi State, went to Texas, came back to Mississippi State. You know, he 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 loves that area. He's from that area. He'll be a good recruiter, and uh, we'll see how it works. But um, you know, it's it's a big opening game, and we'll be watching it along with the Sanford uh, Youngstown State game, Absolutely. which comes on earlier. And I was talking to David Pollock this morning, and uh, they're going down there tomorrow. The families from uh, the game day, and they're going to do a couple spe- segments with the families at Disney World before they actually do and tape that before they go on game day on Saturday morning. How about that? Yeah. For a little that is, is, it's a bit good insight. We did not know that. Again, uh, good luck to Jaron Williams, the Miami quarterback, a local uh, Georgia product from a great program over at uh, Central Gwinnett. Uh, shout out to Todd Wofford, who's always a good guy. He he lets us know when they're hosting a seven on seven, and we yeah. try to get over there because it's always loaded. Hey, get out there and watch Dejan Reynolds this year for sure. Oh yeah. So, all right, uh, we could talk all day, but we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> we got to get back to UGA Sports and get our work done. Don't forget, uh, next Tuesday at noon, we will have another episode. So tune in then. That's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens. <laughs>